Hey guys, it's Eric from Dehaven Camera, and today we're going to go over the setup and configuration of our Ronin 2. This is our most heavy duty gimbal that we stock um, and can run heavier payloads from uh, a full Alexa with zoom lenses and map boxes all the way down to something small like a pocket. So the widest uh, payload range uh, and the best capacity that we have. So we get a lot of questions on how best to configure and what cables and things to use in our rental packages. So we're gonna go over that right now. So for today's video, we're gonna be using the Ronin 2, an Alexa uh, Mini LF, a Zeiss Supreme Lens, a Bright Tangerine uh, Misfit Atom, a small HD 703, a small uh, Teradek Bolt 4K, and a Nucleus single motor kit. So uh, right off, we're gonna turn the gimbal around and we'll take the top bar off. Um, we'll have already set up the ring and attached the uh, gimbal itself to the center support uh, and put our battery tray and batteries on. So we're ready to go on that end. We're gonna bring the camera around. Now for this example, we're using a mini LF. We've stripped the cage except for the top plate. So this would be the MAP 2A, the MAP 2A on the top, which we're leaving on. And then we're swapping the bottom plate with a MAP 1, and that helps us mount the, the slide plate on. And those can be um, given to you on request when you're using an LF with our packages. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's turn the camera over. Now we've left the top plate on, the MAP 2, because that has rod mounts, and that allows us to top mount the motors and make it easier so we're not putting bottom plates on. So in our bags, included in the little soft bag, we have a kit here, and in there we'll have a bunch of screws. So for the bottom of the map one, we're going to use two 3 8, 16, which are the larger screws, roughly where we're going to set our slide plate with the weight that we have. So assuming that we're going to have a map box, a uh, full of focus, um, and a larger lens, we can put the slide plate on quite far forward. Uh, that allows the camera to go back pretty far. Um, and that gives us plenty of room to work with. So I've now put this on so that we can slide back. I'm just estimating the weight. We may have to make this adjustment by moving it forward one set of screws, but we'll start back there. So flipping this over, we're gonna take our Ronin uh, T, uh, the T-bar, the top plate. I wanna put this on to the two small quarter 20 screws in the map two. Now, if your camera only has a single set of screws down the middle, um, or you need a longer top plate, we do include the Cinemilled long top plate, which allows for screws in the center versus these two quarter 20 screws on either side of the stock top plate. So that can be done as well for different configurations. So now that we have this all mounted, I'm gonna bring the camera over, and we're gonna slide it on. Now the Ronin has uh, what's our slide plate or bottom plate down here. So we have two locks, one on the back and one on the side. The side lock will be moved forward to put the camera on and in the lock position. We're gonna slide this plate on until we hear the snap. That's for the safety. And we're gonna put that in and then lock it down. We'll come around and we're gonna do the same thing with the top plate. We're gonna bring the top plate on. We're gonna align it with the T plate and screw this down and then lock that on as well. So now that we have the camera secure, we can go ahead and add the lens. The lens can be done before or after this, but I like putting the camera on without the lens just so we don't accidentally drop something and damage an expensive lens. So I like putting the lens on afterwards. So we're gonna build out everything that sits within the tilt cage first, and that includes cables. So anytime we have cables coming off the tilt cage, we're not gonna assemble those till after we get the camera balanced because we don't want those cables dragging and affecting our balance. So we're always gonna focus on what's inside the tilt cage, which is the center cage that rotates here with the first lock, okay? Anything that is off of that will we'll assemble after we balance. So now that we've got our lens on, we're gonna just check and see. We're still quite back heavy, which is good. That means that we can add more front weight and we still have adjustment room on our slide plates. So we wanna make sure that you know, we may have to adjust the bottom slide plate or maybe adjust the front plate. Um, but it looks like right now we have plenty of room. We can move, still move forward quite a bit and get to our balance point. So now once we add a mat box, we're gonna need to slide back further, motor even further. So it looks like our bottom plate and our top plate are in the right positions. 
So we can lock this all up again. And we're gonna come in and add our, front, our motor. So for this scenario, we're gonna top mount the motors. So because we have the map on the top, this allows us to top mount. Another thing that we like to do with the gimbals is try to mount the motors in the center position. So over the middle of the lens like this versus on the side. Now for cameras that have significant weight on one side or the other, side mounting is better because that can uh, center your, your, your weight and your balance point. But ultimately it's really important that we always try to keep the center of the lens aligned with the center of the roll motor. As we start to add a bunch of weight on one side, say three motors, we're gonna have to move the camera off center and that'll cause a roll in your stabilization rather than a perfect tilt on axis or roll on axis. So that it'll cause like a, a rock. And that can be seen in, in your stabilization and won't look like super smooth. So trying to keep all our weight centralized is really important. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna put our motor on top here. The next thing we're gonna do is add our map box. So for this example, we're gonna be using a bright tangerine clip-on. And we're gonna tighten that down as well. So now that we have our basic uh, pieces on, we're gonna check our tilt again. So we're quite front heavy. So we're gonna loosen this and open it. And then we'll slide our plate back. Now the Ronin has a great feature, which is we can unlock and slide the plate forward and backward for our, our major movements. But then with this small plate on the back here, we can unlock on the bottom and then using the knobs on the front, so the top knob right here is gonna move our camera forward and backward. And that will help with our balance. So moving it counterclockwise will move the camera forward and moving it clockwise will move the camera back. So I like to use that as sort of um, our macro and micro adjustments. So um, we can make the small adjustments or fine adjustments with the knob and we can make our large adjustments with the the unlocking and sliding the tilt. So we're gonna get, get that roughly close and we're gonna go ahead and lock this all back down again. So in our package, it comes with a little baggie and in there you'll have all the cables you need for most of your camera configurations. On this build, since we're no gonna be using everything powered off the CAN bus cables, we're not gonna need the D-TAP adapter, but that is included and normally mounts underneath the tilt cage, so we won't need that. We have our SDI cable for the tilt cage. We're gonna need that. We have our Ronin 2 to Nucleus power cable. So that allows us to power the, Ronin, uh, the Nucleus off the tilt cage itself. We'll have our Airy power adapter. We're gonna have our Ro Ronin power to two pin, which we'll use for the top transmitter and monitor. And we should have two of those in each of our kits. So one for transmitter, one for monitor. Then we'll have our upper SDI cable and some uh, extra cables for both RED, Komodo, Blackmagic, other additional cameras. For this build though, we're just gonna need the Alexa power and the nuclear, Nucleus power. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna plug in, turn this around. We're gonna plug in our Alexa power cable and we're gonna loop this around itself. Keep, keeping our cables nice and clean and tidy on a gimbal is really important because we don't want to snag them as the camera's tilting around. We're gonna plug this into the DC 14 volt out on the bottom of the tray, uh, tilt tray. The next cable we're gonna connect is our SDI cable. So we usually include a little right angle adapter. So we'll come out of SDI one. And again, I'm gonna loop this around itself. So adding this little loop helps keep the cable nice and tidy and doesn't touch the tilt bar. So anytime you have a cable that drags, touches the pan bar, tilt bars, you can have interference with your stabilization and can cause the camera to skew to one side. So the last one, we're gonna add our nucleus power cable. We're gonna loop this again around our system, around our bars, keeping it nice and neat and we're gonna go into the power on the bottom of the tilt, tilt cage right here. Now keeping in mind, and we'll reiterate again, I've cabled this up because all these cables stay within the tilt chassis. 
On some cameras, like a Komodo, we're gonna have to run our, our Komodo control cable up to the top bar. We'll wait and add that after we balance. So we want any cables, again, that are coming off this tilt cage up to a battery plate, up to a monitor, uh, out to Komodo control or RED control. Uh, we'll add that after we balance. For this build though, since we just have a couple of cables, only three, it's quite simple. So we've added our cables now, we're gonna go ahead and rebalance. So I'm gonna turn the gimbal towards me and unlock the tilt, and we can see that now it's tilting backwards just a little. So we're gonna loosen the top lock and loosen the, mi the minor adjustment, the small adjustment on the bottom. That's the lock on the back of the tray. And we're gonna move the camera just slightly forward until we find a good balance point. And then we'll lock it down again. The next thing we're gonna do is tilt the camera upwards as long as we have enough uh, clearance. And we're gonna set the height of the tilt tray. So that's done with these two locks right here. So there's two locks right here, one on either side of the tilt tray. So we're gonna unlock those and then we're gonna slowly move the tray up and down, making sure that you're even on both sides. So there's markings on the, on the sides of, e of each of the tilt uh, risers. So making sure that we're roughly the same on both sides. We don't wanna be offset because that can cause uh, an angle to the chassis. And we're gonna move this until it sits and doesn't tilt forward or backward in either direction. Now once that's done, and once we've set our front to rear, which we already did, we should be able to position the camera in any position and it will stay. This is a really important key. We don't want the camera swinging back to center or swinging up to center. That means it's not balanced. So balanced means that we can actually put this in any position and it will stay wherever we put it. Uh, align our map box a little better. So now that we have that part balanced, we're gonna lock our tilt again and we're gonna go to our roll axis, which is on the back here, and we're gonna look at the roll. Again, this should not fall to either side and it should not come back to center. So we're already quite balanced because this camera was set right in the middle but if we weren't, we would adjust, unlock the bottom here and unlock our top plate. And with the lower knob on the front here, we would go and adjust right to left. So counterclockwise moves the camera, if I'm facing it, to my right and clockwise moves it to my left. So you can see we're a little out of balance now, so we're gonna move it back. Now another trick with balancing these is that if you need to make a very small adjustment, say it's leaning forward just a little bit or leaning back just a little bit, we can unlock the top bar and just push slightly on the T-bar against the top bar and give ourselves like one or two millimeters adjustment front or rear. It's a little tip that we do when we're trying to get just that really extra little bit of fine adjustment to make it exactly perfect. So once I've done that and locked it down, we're gonna double check our tilt and our roll and our camera will sit in any position. So we're gonna lock those two down. Then we're gonna come around here and we're gonna unlock our pan. All right, so that's done. The lock is here, so the pan. And then the lock for the slide is on the side here, it says lock and unlock. We're gonna unlock that. And then we're gonna tilt the gimbal upwards. So we want it vertical. So see how normally it's tilted forward. So we want to tilt it upward so it's vertical. And then we're gonna pick this up and we're gonna, we're gonna pick this up and we're gonna watch and see which way the gimbal swings. So again, being vertical, we're gonna pick it up and we can see that it's swinging to my right. So now we're gonna bring this adjustment closer to me or bring the whole tray closer to me and doing this tilt again, I want to get it to the point where it doesn't swing in either direction when I tilt the camera. So that's how we balance the pan. So now I'm balanced, we're gonna lock it up and lock our axis again. So now we've set our tilt front to rear, our tilt cage up and down, our roll and our pan. So we're completely balanced on the gimbal now. We could start operating, but we need to add our monitor and transmitter so we're gonna add a couple, grab a couple accessories out of the case. So this is the uh, DJI monitor mount. I really like this for going up on the top ring and mounting my monitor and transmitter to all as one unit. 
And I generally like to operate with my monitor on the right, but right or left doesn't really matter. It's whatever works best for you. So I'm going to tighten this down. And then we're going to come in with one of these small rig dual ball arms. And we're going to screw this to the top of that mount. Now on these little ball arms, there's some little holes in the, in the thumb screws. Those are actually for you to put your Allen key tool in and tighten. So we're going to make sure that those are tight. I'm going to pan and tilt this down. And then we're going to grab our small HD 703 monitor right here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to screw this down tight. And again, with our Allen key, we're going to tighten that down. It's a good idea to use the Allen key to tighten these thumb screws, not putting the monitor on and twisting the monitor on the mount because that can cause you to crack the screen accidentally. So it's better to use these little T handles uh, or your Allen key multi-tool, which is included in your kit. You could put that in the hole and use it to rotate it. So now we have our monitor mounted. We're going to turn this around. I'm going to use one of these Condor Blue QR plates. We really like these for our transmitters and mounting devices. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to use it to mount a QR plate on the back of the Ronin monitor mount. So we're going to screw that in right there. And then on the other side, we're going to take the other side of the QR and we're going to mount it to the back of the transmitter. So now we have a little QR on the back of the transmitter. We're going to mount that on and lock it on. So now we have one unit which can be adjusted very easily. All the cables are consistent in short runs. Um, and when we do need to break it down or take it off for transport, this can all come apart as one piece. So now that that's done, we're going to plug in our SDI cable. So we'll come around over here and we'll plug this into that side of the chassis and go around and into the input side of our transmitter or we can go into the input side of our monitor depending on length. So for here, our cable length is easier to go to our transmitter first. The next thing is we'll take our two pin Limo to Ronin CAN bus connectors. These are included in your kit. We're going to plug that into one side and then into the two pin on our transmitter. Now all these cables will be included are included in our rental package. We find that it makes it easiest to, to configure when all the cables uh, are not running, having to run D taps to the back. So we like to do two pins as much as possible. So we're going to plug in the two pin here on the monitor. And then we're going to get one more SDI cable. Come out of our output of our transmitter. And into the input on our monitor. Now, keeping in mind that if you're generating LUTs on your monitor and you want to send those LUTs out to your client, you would reverse this order. So we would go to monitor first and then out to transmitter. So as we can see, we've kept this all nice and tidy. Um, if we find that we have a lot of loose cables, we can always tie those up with either bongo ties or we can tie them in a, a little loop over itself. Just keeping cables nice and tidy when you're on a gimbal is really important because you're generally moving in tight spaces um, or with a lot of hands around, you're holding it, picking it up. We don't want to have these cables in a place where they can get snagged. So now we've got our monitor, our transmitter, our camera mounted. We're fully balanced. So we can go ahead and unlock our axes and then go ahead and power up our gimbal. So we'll turn that around so we can see. So powering up our gimbal is done with the upper button up at the top here. We can hear it power up. And we can see that we are now balanced. So before we go into operation, we put a new payload on the gimbal. We're going to auto calibrate this. So we're going to go to the motor setting and into auto tune. I generally go with the default at 60%. It depends on how you tune your gimbal. If you're doing more manual tuning than auto tuning, but for most rental customers, we suggest using the default setting. Um, and then we'll stand back on a flat level surface that's not moving around and we're going to let it auto-tune itself. 
Now that that's complete, we can back out of that menu and we can pick it up and check for our operation and make sure that the gimbal is secure and moving the way we want. Now, we have settings that we can move, uh, make adjustments from there, like in smooth track. So we can choose to have our pan in smooth track or follow mode, uh, our tilt in the same thing. I like to leave push tilt on, that way I can just move the tilt with my hand to set a shot if I don't have a second operator. So I really like having that. With the roll, sometimes I like to turn smooth track off. So the roll is happening, you know, exactly following all my movements. It's just keeping roll perfectly stable, um, especially if we're doing movements around something that helps so that the roll doesn't get behind us and start losing horizon. So settings can be a personal preference. I suggest playing with it a few times, playing with the shots and making the adjustments as needed. So that's a basic setup for our Ronin R2 with an Alexa LF, Zeiss Supreme, a single motor kit, and a map box. Hope this was helpful. All of these items are available for rental at dehavencamera.com, uh, or you can send us an email at rentals at dehavencamera.com, and we're happy to help you configure in any way that you're looking to get your shots. Thanks.